Right, here we go. Let's start from the front and work our way backwards. <clears throat> so I'll go through everything I can think of. Um, okay, the badge. On your kit, you might have like a sunken in area, right? Um, that's been designed to fit a real Ferrari badge. Now, the thing is, a real Ferrari badge is like 200 quid. Now, in hindsight, what I should have done, I got this badge off eBay. It's got to be metal, don't use a sticker, it looks shit. That's what I did first time. Um, <clears throat> but if I were you, what I would do is I would get this indentation before it's sprayed filled in. I haven't, you can, you can just see it's a little bit of a lip there and I told Phil to do that and he's so glad I did that because then you can get a cheaper badge off eBay still metal but then it doesn't, it doesn't matter how big it is does it but um, yeah you um, you won't see that indentation that I've unfortunately got um, get a number plate surround like this to stick your number plate on makes it look a lot more sort of factory fitted this surround, don't get one off eBay. This is a very simple one from Mercedes Garage because I've got two Mercs and they all have these. Go in there, they're £1.80 each, but if chances are they're just given to you for free. And it's bendable enough to uh, fit the curve of the uh, front bonnet. Um, obviously, it's different on your car, but on these lights, on the underside of this red, I've got like, you know, a D rubber stuck on the inside so when the light lenses come up they really have something to push up against and seal against um, this is pretty solid I mean I plan to basically when I have to change the bulbs and that's the other thing when you fit your lights up make sure you put nice white bulbs in so the ones that come in my kit they're horrible yellow so these are LED strip lights which are white but then the bulbs in there are yellow and they look shit um, so um, Andy who's got a V8 KLR, he's put some nice white bulbs in there. So you want to do that first time round. But basically I will change it and then I will sort of get this a bit more solid because it isn't as solid as I like. Um, moving around here. Arch liners. So you'll see on my bill, but I haven't got the front ones on at the moment, but the front piece, don't try and, this probably be the same on yours. Don't try and fit it flush to this lip because the wheel will hit it when you turn. If you see in there, there's a little, oh, you can't see it, can you see it? Basically mine start probably about an inch and a half inwards. So they probably actually start here to clear the wheel and then they just go straight across. So it's not flush, but there's no other way around it. So you might have that situation. Um, so basically here are my uh, fake discs, I've got the, the ceramic look one, so I've got this lip here, drill your holes out, don't not drill them out because it just makes them look so much better, you can rough them up, I sprayed them with like bumper paint so it's grey, obviously and bolts in here and washers to attach the black metal disc to, uh, there's my calipers, it's got the real caliper stickers and also you know you might want to do them the way I've done it because it's easier to read the Ferrari um, you'll see in my build where I talk about that obviously you've got some real allen bolts on there, bleed nipples and like the, the copper pipes at the bottom um, what else so talking about the old arch gaps or to be able to clear the um, clear the arch, you can see here that that is not a perfect plane. It's a step down, and you need that for it to basically close and go into there. And don't get too caught up on making this gap small because it needs to be big to clear that. You'd rather have it bigger and miss and not scratch, and have this one tighter and neater. Um, <clears throat> when your wing mirrors, you really want to fit them up like get them all sort of lined up before you do them for real and try and minimize this gap here some people have massive gaps here it looks absolutely awful and you can basically bridge it out but you can see here that i've managed to get mine pretty much flush there it's never going to be perfect because the window will sort of go here but you really want to minimize that because 
that's a big giveaway um, on some of the cars I've seen. Um, we just open up the bonnet. Oh, it's obviously still using the original bonnet catch. So, um, you should have this in here, this would be a steel thing. So basically that obviously fits into the bonnet catch here that is trimmed and repositioned. You'll see it on the build videos at DNA do, you should get a bracket similar to this. Be careful here because you've obviously got your VIN plate. It's not the only VIN plate though, obviously the main ones in the back. I was a bit worried at first because drilling these holes I actually got rid of some of the letters. But anyway, um, you know, you can see you might have to space it out, in and out. I've done various washers. It took me ages to get this right. And basically because that is metal and that is metal, when the bonnet shuts, you want it when you're going along that it not to flap. So <clears throat> you want it to be really tight because I noticed that when I was first going, the bonnet was moving here. Obviously you've got bonnet stops here to push up against the bonnet when it's shut. But you know, it's a real trial and error thing. Um, but basically at the end of the day you want it to be tight fitting into there but because it's metal on metal it might squeak so what I've done is I put like rubber tape around here obviously it will wear it wears out over time but because then it's not metal on metal so it doesn't squeak <coughs> um, you can see here my under bumper cover I've cut it away that's where my washer bottle is it's not the best fitting at the moment um, it's just one of the things I will get to one day do you really want to worry about tying up underneath the bonnet? Yeah, maybe one day, but not for now. Um, you can see here, you should get these. These are like flitch brackets. They're basically DNA installed for me. I didn't bother fitting them before I took it up there, um, but they recommend doing it because it means you can up, raise this part of the wing up and down as well. Um, what I recommend you do is in the fuse box, you see the where I've cut away part of the body there? That just makes it so you can just get the lid off easier because otherwise it's a right bitch um, to get off. So things like that. Um, in my front there, that was wood sport actually, they cut that there because again on the 430 kit it gets it's real bugger to get out the way it is. And you can see I've had to cut under here. Oh you all have to cut under here, I could have done that neater to be fair. But basically, um, yeah, Woodsport did that so they could get it in and out. Um, don't know what your hinges will be like, it'll probably be a similar sort of thing there, just marked for when they took it off and sprayed it. Um, it's all pretty standard. I haven't bothered with the under this cover here that you might get in your kit. I've got obviously, I've got a brand new big radiator in there from Woodsport. Um, there you go, you can see the horns just there, you've installed it the same as me. Um, so I've kept the standard sort of looking wipers. I've had to lower this as you know. So this is my new scuttle cover. I've had to extend it down here. So it normally ends about here. You will have a similar thing to do on yours. I recommend um, using just put a bit of plastic underneath and then fill it in with rubber filler, flexible filler. And then spray it in this um, textured paint because there are various bits that I had to fill in as well. Um, and um, <clears throat> if you try and do it in a shiny smooth finish, you'll never get it right and it'll look, you'll never get it perfect and it'll look rubbish. But basically if you use the textured paint then it'll hide any sort of imperfections that you have in your filler. I mean, I took this is the second version. Second version I've done of this. The first version I used proper filler, and as soon as I got it under here, it all cracked. Basically, you want to do it so you, when you're fitting it, you've definitely got a gap here because otherwise you'll never get it in, and you'll scratch it all up as you're trying to fit it back, and it'll break your heart because you spend so much time on it. Obviously, screw covers there to hide the sort of bolts that you use. Um, I basically I had to paint all under here the metal your be yours will be black anyway there's my washer jets so the actual pipes hide inside here so you can see here what I've done so I 
because you have to move this bit back yeah a lot of people just open leave it open and open the hole but basically I've got another scuttle cover and cut the grill out you probably could have got away with it by using the original one but I smashed that up first time round basically what I've done this scuttle is the original one with my car but this grill is from another one and you can see what I've done is basically it's repeated itself so you can see here that bit is on the original one and that bit is exactly the same thing I filled in that curve there but that bit is basically off the second version and I basically just cut the grill out and pushed it in trimmed it back here and pushed the new grill in and sealed it all up I've got this rubber thing along here but you can't really tell still looks like it's all one piece but I mean yeah that took me ages to do that second time around because I just didn't like that hole that showed and it just looks more factory then <clears throat> um, it's probably about it really for the uh, for under the bonnet to be fair um, obviously underneath here I've cleaned it all up etc etc but yeah and then you just put the cover back and you don't really see um, so if we move sort of along here um, to the doors what I was talking about is basically so that's your access panel there's a hole cut there but basically you might have something marked out now what the problem is is that marking out um, on the other side of my door I couldn't use this plate because this plate is very flat and it, you can't bend it and all that but the problem was is because the, it had to cover up a surface that wasn't flat it was slightly curved it meant that this was slightly curved and potentially when you shut the door it was going to bang on the edge of that side there you see luckily it misses and it doesn't um, hit, hit the door but on the other side it was a lot closer so I would be very wary of following any template that's on there and, and it doesn't have to be a very big hole to be fair um, but yeah so on the other side I've literally got this shape but just in the carbon fibre sort of covering so it's completely flush and it's bendable so it's thicker so I haven't got one of these on the other side um, door handles I love doing them it would be a similar sort of setup. If I were you, if I were doing it the second time around I'd maybe look to have some sort of covering here so you can't see the hinge set up I mean it's all sprayed red but and this is literally it's very tight so literally you just need to go pop like that pop like that and the door opens but you just need to go it just goes open. Obviously, anyone who gets in the car, always tell them not to yank the handles. Um, the door strips. Now, this is a problem. So, when you're doing your door cards, when you fit them up, try and. The problem I have is I've got the door strip on the outside, that's great, but I can't get the door strip to fit properly this side, so I haven't got them. And what it means is when I shut the door with the window down, it wobbles. It's a real pet hate and it really annoys me the gap on the other side is bigger but still I don't know that's one of the things I still yet to solve because I'd rather not have the door strip on the leather if I'm honest but um, yeah it's just got this wobbly window effect it's always had to shut the door holding that when it's down um, so basically petrol flap is connected to the original MR2 lever this is the boot lever so for my rear deck I've got basically that one that, that releases one of the catches and then oh, this was off eBay I think it's from a Fiat Punto or something but this is the other one that does the other one alright so now they're both gone some people do it so it's just one lever to um, open up both catches but I wasn't really going to go there. I've just done it so they're both on the same side of the car. So now, lift my lift my deck up. Um, so Z flaps. This is what I was talking to you about. So you'll have this roll bar cover, right? And what will happen is, is that it will be filled in all the way to there, right? Now this whole Z flap thing is basically this, right? So the thing is, you, you might have this cover here, and what they do is you literally get a butt hinge, 
and then this flap is literally hinged here. The problem with that is as follows is when the when the roof is up, this is part of the roof and you've got this bit that comes all the way around here like that. That that literally you can see sits on here. So basically it takes up all that space, right? Now if it's hinged there, your flap has got nowhere but nowhere to go but forward, right? And it will just stick and it, you could potentially bang your shoulder on it it's when you're getting in and out of the car and it could break off. And it looks crap to be honest with you bending forward. So what a lot of people do, they do this thing. It involves cutting out this bit area here and they use this cabinet hinge. The beauty is you can bolt it to this thing. You've got adjustment because it's like a cabinet hinge. And then you literally make a bracket. I mean, this was done, this was bonded on by DNA. It's a bit of shit to be fair. But um, it doesn't, I mean, it, it's obviously very secure, but it doesn't look the prettiest. I'd do it again a different way if I could. But basically, you can see here, you've, you, I've got basically an L shaped bracket here, or two of them, two like prongs, and they're bolted to the part of the hinge. And basically, when the hinge is so this is your cupboard door hinge from your kitchen so that's basically the door um, open and that's the door shut but basically when the door open it sort of catches and it folds right back and then you can see it clears all of this area here so when the roof comes up because this is metal and rubber you want it to ensure that basically it doesn't hit that as it comes up so here it sits away nice and tidy out of the way this is the loop that I have for my rear deck strap that I haven't actually taken off, I don't need it anymore. <coughs> Basically, yeah, there's your Z flap and you can see it sits forward like that when the roof's down and the rear deck's down. And then I've got this bit of rubber here that literally, so the Z flap sits that side. Because it was a case that when we're going along the wind would sort of blow it in like that. But then with that bit of rubber up there, it stops it. Um, You'll probably have a different frame to what I've got. Um, this was sort of, they re-engineered it for the 430 kit. Definitely recommend painting the underside of your rear deck black before you get it resprayed, and obviously before you fit it, because it's a lot easier to paint it than doing it upside down. I've no idea what frame you'll have. Uh, you you can let me know. Um, You'll have, your pods will be a similar sort of thing here, like that. And I've got these latches on strings that basically lock it into this area here. So they fold down like that. They're, they're good fun and games, obviously, when you're fitting all of them up. Um, these little things here are part of my rear deck safety straps, as you know. They pull down there, they're just riveted to there. And basically, here's the strap there that fits in and it feeds down through this gap in the uh, roll bar cover that you should have that feeds the straps to keep the rear window down. That's the other thing you'll need to drill a slot in the roll bar cover here to let those straps through. Where is it? So you've got a slot here, probably like, you know, an inch wide, like that. So they're my two straps, and then basically these straps, the roof straps, just bolt to that bolt there like that and I can just tighten them so I've got two straps on each side, one for the rear deck and each side and one for the rear window each side um, when um, on your roll bar cover <coughs> obviously these bits bolt to the, the actual bracket these bits bolt to the bracket, but in order to actually get to them, you need to drill a hole here. <laughs> so don't forget that, drill a circle there, each side. Also, you need to drill a hole in the middle, because basically, there's the lever under there, that literally secures your roof down, right? And if you haven't got the hole there, you can't release that lever like that. This is a bit higher than normal because of the V6 and it's got this plate underneath but it still still locks down which is nice. Um, there, um, there might be bits of trim sort of plastic around here that you probably don't need inside here as well. Um, you might have different latches to me 
um, but you can see here these are the latches that I got you might get them depends on the frame you can see here there's the frame that's the thing that latches down and locks the rear deck I've actually put some tape rubber tape around there to stop the squeaks because again it's metal on metal so here are my cables cable ends on here I find instead of using solderless nipples to tighten them up use these things which are the inside of electrical connector blocks you know the sort of light light clear coloured ones just cut them away and then you've got that and it's a lovely sort of strong thing to secure wire all very cheap um, I've actually got a spring set up here so basically when the, the rear deck is open it, it basically springs it back you might want to do something similar um, <clears throat> these things you'll have these things these T brackets um, you might get thumb screw with them to basically tighten them up I unfortunately lost them um, so I've just got um, nuts to tighten them up but in all honesty I don't even when I take the roof down I don't bother putting them down can't be asked they're set to the right height it doesn't really matter I don't have to worry about them then because of course if that was loose potentially your roof would come off when you've sort of got it down so me being OCD and safety orientated I just leave them up like that anyway uh, the grills for basically the rear deck um, some people do it in pieces I just did it in one big three pieces I just did it in one big piece again use the old sticker flex to stick it down um, yeah so I've got this string here just makes it easier for me to to release these bits um, gas rams you'll have something similar I guess when you're fitting them up for the first time and you think oh my god they're really violent that's what I had so basically I did it and the rear deck flew open I was shitting myself because I thought they were too strong but when you have the engine in place and you have the rear glass on there and it's painted it's a lot heavier so don't worry about it and it opens up the treat now um, depending on what your frames like this is my frame I had to pack it out to make sure it met the side of the uh, the edge here so I've just packed it out well, I've actually built a little bracket there to, to bridge the gap can't, I can't understand why they didn't design it to make it fit anyway but they have to design it all with tolerances I guess there's my engine light there that strip that's just wired into the um, number plate lights um, you can see the blue connectors there that just rolls down and it goes through that hole there like that all these sort of holes hole like that drill obviously before you put the rear deck on because it's a lot easier even things like fitting up this cover maybe fit it up before you've done the rear deck because it's a lot easier to get to um, this thing is just the thing for my third brake light it's like the flasher unit so basically that feeds the third brake light the wire goes under there and it comes up through that hole to the third brake light and it just makes it flash when you press it for the first time flashes three times before it comes on um, you can see I've got a nut missing, that reminds me, let me put that on oh, I'll do it later do it later so there's my there's my engine cover and you can see it's been completely mullered and it literally is not a lot left now um, you might want to put some padding underneath this when it falls down into here um, you uh, you'll there'll probably be an MR2 based sort of cover here you could trim I thought I found it was too thick so I've just put a, a nice normal bit of uh, U rubber there cover that up put rubbers along here sort of finish it off a bit um, my rear deck my alarm trigger it used to be sort of here on the MR2 I've put it over there so it touches the rear deck when it's shut um, what else um, you want to invest in this stuff called amalgamation tape because it's fantastic for your wiring basically you do all your wiring and then you cover it and it's just this perfect sort of waterproof sort of sealer and it's all black get these like um, what they called um, cable tie trees I use them a lot of, in a lot of places they're all underneath here to feed the wire and it keeps it all nice and tight um, if we go around here Again, 
cut out a little thing here just to make that rear fuse box easier to take off you could probably do it a bit bigger than that to be fair it just makes it a lot easier I haven't got my battery here anymore um, that's now in the front um, but uh, yeah in terms of your this bit here I toured around with loads of different ideas I mean I don't think you can go wrong with a little grill like that and then a little bar like that to be fair because it lets all the heat out of the exhaust it's perfect you might want to put like a little trim thing here to cover up the wooden bit here of the deck because that will be wood and it will show and I just think it finishes it off with like the black sort of corner edge there you know again from B&Q um, what else um, yeah so you can see I haven't got my strut braces anymore because they don't fit cause the engine um, wood sport so they don't really need it um, <clears throat> what else I'll just open up the petrol flap the petrol flap is an absolute bitch to do you'll get a housing and then you'll see in my build it's bonded oops bonded to the inside of that and da -da -da, I balls mine up and I got DNA and DNA redid it you might want to do the same thing and get Shah to do it because it's a pain in the arse, it takes ages to do and then you've got to worry about getting this all flush and looking nice so in the end I let them do it obviously it can't touch around here otherwise it will scratch but yeah that's one thing that I ballsed up and uh, let them do it properly um, I think I'll leave that for now and I'll come back later on your rear deck you want to fit all these sort of D rubbers or P rubbers along here to basically make it look nice, stop paintwork banging on paintwork but along this bit here what you want to do is you want to have a break in the D rubber and then just put I don't know maybe a flat bit of rubber tape because this is where your straps go and the thing is, is if you have D rubber there all the way along the straps will rip that D rubber whereas it won't rip that and then you've obviously got a bit of a gap for it to um, you know the strap to go through and because it's still black you don't notice it so that's definitely something I recommend you uh, you do um, obviously your dummy engine got to make sure it doesn't touch the glass it's always um, um, a bit of a pain in the ass, and you'll probably have to file out it took me a whole Saturday morning to file out all this bit here to ensure that the glass fitted don't know whether you're going to have real glass or not but um, it, uh, you need to do that because um, yeah obviously allow for a little bit of a paint thickness but yeah you'll need to do that obviously recommend the three holes one two three for this bad boy do before you paint the car <laughs> um, I don't know what you'll have here this was a bitch to do this grill I didn't think we did it well, very well particularly I found oh, the other thing is basically I designed it I put a bit of rubber on the other side of that yeah so when it shut the horse's ears didn't touch the paintwork um, this horse is probably a bit too big for this gap um, you might not even have it to be fair um, but yeah that was the one way around it I had that basically when the rear deck shut that grill pushed forward so the little horse's ears wouldn't clip the paintwork um, this thing make two little what you want to do is make two little brackets so when this is screwed in it's screwed into the brackets so it does and make sure it so it doesn't push through the hole I've got a mates whose car it's got one of these and it's pushed in and it looks terrible and he can't get to it because of various reasons but basically yeah you really want to make sure that that is attached with a bracket and obviously make sure it fits before you go to paint because basically the paint will make the hole a little bit smaller so everything you do allow for paint thickness and I know it's not much but yeah my rear lights are obviously a bit different they are pretty snug fit to be fair but yeah once you put them in once you don't need to take them out hopefully touch wood um, 
don't know whether you all have reflectors, I can't remember. Rear diffuser, I don't think yours is a separate bit, but mine is, and I've got this rubber here, so it's rubber against uh, paintwork, not paintwork against paintwork. This thing, you can see what I've done here. Again, get your number plates around from Mercedes, bond the butt hinges to that side, and then just have two screws there. It basically, there you go. So I've got my wires coming out there. I've got some padded foam tape on the other side so it doesn't bang the paintwork and then there you go um, it's a nice little setup there to get to your battery